The Titanic sinking is a very sad part of our history that still sticks in our minds, even though more than 100 years have passed. When we talk about the Titanic, everyone knows the popular story. But there are some details that not many people know. These new revelations will make you rethink what you believed about this famous tragedy. Join us as we explore 15 of the strangest facts about the Titanic. Number 15. Ship Speed and Iceberg Warnings The ill-fated voyage of the Titanic was marred by a convergence of unsettling factors, with the ship's speed and the handling of iceberg warnings playing pivotal roles in the tragic disaster. The vessel, originally designed for a cruising speed of around 22 knots, was hurtling through an ice-prone region at an alarming pace of approximately 21 knots on that fateful night, just shy of its maximum capability. This breakneck speed proved to be a critical factor, hindering the Titanic's maneuverability and ability to navigate obstacles effectively. Captain Edward J. Smith, facing pressure from the White Star Line to achieve a record-breaking journey to New York, succumbed to the allure of prestige and recognition, prioritizing speed over safety. In the lead-up to the collision, multiple iceberg warnings from neighboring ships were issued, emphasizing the presence of ice in the Titanic's path and urging caution. However, these warnings were largely disregarded, and the ship's course and speed remained largely unchanged. Despite receiving at least six iceberg warnings on the night of April 14, 1912, the Titanic continued its rapid pace. Regrettably, there was minimal communication between the bridge and the crow's nest, where the crew was stationed, regarding the imminent danger. This lack of coordination and information exchange contributed significantly to the ship's inability to respond promptly when the iceberg was finally spotted. The consequences were dire. The massive vessel, unable to alter its course swiftly enough, collided with the iceberg, resulting in a catastrophic breach of the hull. The tragedy unfolded as a direct consequence of the ship's excessive speed and the neglect of crucial iceberg warnings. The prioritization of speed over safety, coupled with inadequate communication and coordination, sealed the fate of the Titanic and claimed the lives of many aboard. Number 14. Misinterpreted Distress Signals In the tumultuous aftermath of the Titanic's collision with the iceberg, the ship's crew urgently dispatched distress signals to nearby vessels in a desperate plea for assistance. However, the interpretation of these distress signals proved to be a critical factor that hindered the timely arrival of much-needed help, exacerbating the tragic loss of life. The Titanic's crew utilized both rockets and Morse code to convey their distress. Wireless operators Jack Phillips and Harold Bride initially transmitted the Morse code distress signal CQD, later replaced by the now iconic SOS. Despite these efforts, the nearby ship Californian, under the command of Captain Stanley Lord, witnessed the Titanic's distress rockets, but tragically misinterpreted them. Instead of recognizing the signals as a plea for help, the crew of the Californian believed them to signify a celebration or non-urgent communication. This misinterpretation led to a critical delay in the Californian's response to the Titanic's dire situation. Unfortunately, the confusion over the distress signals was not isolated to a single ship. It affected other vessels in the vicinity as well. While some received the distress calls, they were too distant to offer immediate assistance. Ships like the SS Mount Temple attempted to respond, but were impeded by ice in the water, rendering it impossible to reach the sinking Titanic in time. The misread distress signals underscore the chaotic and confusing circumstances surrounding the Titanic's sinking. The failure of nearby ships to accurately discern and promptly respond to the urgent calls for help stands as a tragic and unsettling aspect of the disaster, significantly contributing to the profound loss of life that unfolded that fateful night. Number 13. Limited Lifeboat Capacity A deeply unsettling aspect of the Titanic's tragedy revolves around the glaring insufficiency of lifeboats on board. Despite the ship's potential to accommodate 64 lifeboats, a number enough for all passengers and crew, only 20 were provided, with a combined capacity of merely 1,178 individuals. 
This perplexing decision stemmed from considerations both aesthetic and economic. The ship's designers, driven by a desire to maintain the Titanic's opulent appearance, believed that an abundance of lifeboats would clutter the deck and compromise its luxurious ambiance. Moreover, the marketing of the Titanic as virtually unsinkable created a false sense of security, fostering the misconception that a full complement of lifeboats was unnecessary. Tragically, when disaster struck, the consequences of this decision became painfully evident. A significant number of passengers and crew found themselves unable to secure a place on a lifeboat, severely diminishing their chances of survival as the ship succumbed to the depths. Compounding the issue was the fact that several lifeboats were launched with only partial occupancy. This resulted from a combination of inadequate communication and coordination during the evacuation process, coupled with passengers' reluctance to board lifeboats, either under the belief that the ship was not truly sinking or in the hope of an imminent return to the supposedly unsinkable Titanic. The inadequacy of lifeboat capacity not only underscores the preventable loss of lives, but also serves as a stark reminder of the arrogance and neglect that played a pivotal role in the unfolding disaster. Number 12. Poor Evacuation Procedures Titanic's disaster extended to its evacuation procedures, marked by disorganization and poor execution, ultimately resulting in unnecessary loss of life. Several factors converged to create a chaotic evacuation, encompassing a dearth of training, inadequate communication, and widespread confusion among both the crew and passengers. A critical shortcoming was the lack of proper training for the Titanic's crew in handling emergencies and large-scale disasters, including the abandonment of the ship. This deficiency became evident in the disorderly manner in which the evacuation unfolded, with crew members often grappling with unclear roles and responsibilities, leading to confusion and inefficiency. In addition, communication breakdowns between the crew and passengers exacerbated the chaos. Many passengers remained unaware of the severity of the situation, failing to comprehend the imperative to abandon ship. Consequently, delays in boarding lifeboats ensued as passengers hesitated to leave the perceived safety of the Titanic. The lifeboat launch process itself was marred by confusion and inefficiency. Lifeboats were frequently lowered unevenly, causing them to tilt and becoming difficult to board. In some instances, lifeboats were launched only partially filled, as crew members struggled to convince passengers to board or were uncertain about the lifeboat's capacity. Attempts to maintain order during the evacuation saw ship officers resorting to threats of violence, with some firing warning shots into the air to deter passengers from rushing the lifeboats, thereby intensifying panic and confusion. The absence of a clear chain of command further contributed to the disarray, as Captain Smith, seemingly overwhelmed, became detached from the unfolding disaster, leaving officers to make decisions without clear guidance. This chaotic evacuation process had tragic consequences, with lifeboats launched only partially filled and numerous passengers left behind to confront the sinking ship. The confluence of poor coordination, communication breakdowns, and a lack of training and preparation resulted in an evacuation that fell far short of efficiency, contributing significantly to the devastating loss of life during the disaster. Number 11. Binoculars of the Crow's Nest Adding to the unsettling facts surrounding the Titanic disaster is the striking absence of binoculars in the crow's nest, a critical equipment oversight with potentially catastrophic consequences. Binoculars were indispensable tools for the lookout crew responsible for spotting potential hazards, particularly icebergs, in the ship's path. However, inexplicably, the intended binoculars for the crow's nest were inaccessible when they were most needed. The essential binoculars were inexplicably locked in a cupboard, and to compound the issue, the key had been misplaced. This meant that lookouts Frederick Fleet and Reginald Lee, responsible for keeping a vigilant watch, had no choice but to rely solely on their unaided eyes to scan for dangers ahead. The lack of binoculars significantly hampered the crew's ability to spot threats in a timely manner. This deficiency likely played a pivotal role in the crew's inability to detect the looming iceberg soon enough to alter the ship's course and avoid a collision. 
Some experts argue that had the lookouts been equipped with binoculars, they might have been able to identify the iceberg sooner, providing the ship with crucial extra time to change course and avert disaster. This absence of binoculars in the crow's nest serves as a stark example of a seemingly minor oversight with potentially severe consequences. The overlooked detail, while appearing insignificant, may have played a substantial role in the sequence of events leading to the tragic sinking of the Titanic. Number 10. Class Discrimination During the Sinking The sinking of the Titanic laid bare the stark class discrimination prevalent in the early 20th century, as evidenced by the ship's evacuation procedures and the allocation of lifeboat seats that disproportionately favored first- and second-class passengers. This systemic bias left many third-class passengers, also known as steerage passengers, at a significant disadvantage during the unfolding tragedy. Steerage passengers, relegated to cramped quarters below decks and situated far from the lifeboats, faced daunting challenges when the order to abandon ship was issued. Trapped below decks with limited access to upper levels and lifeboats, many third-class passengers found themselves in a perilous situation. Disturbing accounts suggest that some crew members actively hindered these passengers, preventing them from reaching upper decks by locking gates and redirecting them away from lifeboats. This discriminatory treatment might have stemmed from a desire to prioritize the safety of wealthier passengers, or an unfounded belief that third-class passengers were more expendable. The consequences of such disparities were profound, with the survival rate for third-class passengers significantly lower than that of their first- and second-class counterparts. Only 25% of third-class men, 46% of third-class women, and 34% of third-class children survived the disaster. In stark contrast to the survival rates of 67% for first-class men, 97% for first-class women, and 100% for first-class children. The class discrimination laid bare during the Titanic's sinking stands as a sobering reminder of the harsh realities faced by the less privileged in society. The pronounced differences in survival rates between classes underscore the tragic consequences of social inequality, even in the face of a catastrophic disaster. Number 9. John Jacob Astor The allure of the Titanic famously deemed unsinkable, attracted a cohort of wealthy patrons, and among them was the American magnate John Jacob Astor IV. That's John Jacob Astor. Not only was he the wealthiest individual on board, but he was widely recognized as the richest living man of his time, with a staggering net worth of $87 million. Adjusted for inflation, this sum equates to an astounding $2.3 billion today. Astor's legacy extended beyond his considerable fortune. A decorated military veteran, he authored a popular science fiction novel titled A Journey in Other Worlds. In line with the Astor family tradition, he amassed millions through astute real estate ventures. In 1897, Astor unveiled the Astoria Hotel in New York City, heralded as the world's most opulent hotel. Situated alongside the Waldorf Hotel, owned by Astor's cousin and rival William, the duo formed the iconic Waldorf Astoria Hotel, a name synonymous with luxury for over a century. Tragically, Astor met his demise on the ill-fated Titanic, accompanied by his family dog, Kitty. Although Astor perished, his wife and unborn child, who were also on board, managed to survive and ultimately inherited his immense wealth. John Jacob Astor the fourth story is not only one of wealth and opulence, but also a poignant chapter in the Titanic's narrative highlighting the stark contrasts of life and loss during that fateful voyage. Number 8. Female Survival Rate The sinking of the Titanic stands as a harrowing disaster, with over 1,500 lives lost and a stark contrast in survival rates among the passengers. Chuck, a researcher, delved into the demographics of the survivors, revealing chilling statistics that underscore the tragic nature of the event. Out of the 144 female first-class passengers, 97% were rescued, while a mere 32% of their 175 male counterparts survived. Shockingly, male second-class passengers experienced the lowest survival rate, with only 14 out of 168 making it out alive. 
The overall survival rate for women was 74%, in stark contrast to the male survival rate of 20%. Adding another layer of sorrow to the tragedy is the fate of the family pets on board. While their quarters were opened after the ship began to sink, only two of them managed to survive. One poignant account involves a passenger named Anne Elizabeth Isham, who may have met her demise due to her reluctance to leave behind her Great Dane. Legend suggests that she was spotted in the water with her arms wrapped around her dog, and ultimately, she was one of only four first-class women who perished. These heart-wrenching details illuminate the profound human and animal toll exacted by the titanic disaster, underscoring the individual stories of loss and sacrifice amidst the broader tragedy. Number 7. Violet Jessup Violet Jessup's story is a remarkable testament to both fortune and misfortune, depending on one's perspective. This British nurse, raised in Argentina, earned a unique place in history as she found herself at the center of not one but three major maritime disasters involving sister ships deemed unsinkable. At the age of 24, Jessup first embarked on the ill-fated Titanic, where she worked as a nurse. During that tragic night, she was not quite asleep when the iceberg struck. Describing the chaos that ensued, she later wrote, I was ordered up on deck. Calmly, passengers strolled about. I stood at the bulkhead with the other stewardesses, watching the women fling their husbands before being put into the boats with their children. Remarkably, Jessup became one of the fortunate few rescued by the Carpathia after enduring eight hours of the Titanic's sinking. However, Fate had more in store for Jessup. Four years later, she found herself on board the Titanic's sister ship, the Britannic, when it sank in the Aegean Sea due to an unexplained explosion. In a tragic turn of events, the Britannic succumbed within 55 minutes, claiming the lives of 30 out of the 1,066 people on board. British authorities speculated that the ship might have been struck by a torpedo, or hit a mine planted by German forces during World War I. Astonishingly, Jessup once again survived the sinking of a supposedly unsinkable vessel. Intriguingly, Jessup had also been on board the RMS Olympic, the eldest of the three sister ships, when it collided with the British warship HMS Hawk. Although the Olympic did not sink, the fact that Jessup was present on all three of these ill-fated ships, each with its own share of misfortune, is undeniably remarkable. Whether one sees Violet Jessup as exceptionally lucky or tragically unlucky, her journey through these historic maritime disasters remains an extraordinary tale of survival against the odds. Number 6. The Movie Titanic Before James Cameron solidified his status as one of the most successful filmmakers in history, he was a sci-fi filmmaker with a grand vision, a big-budget blockbuster about a cruise ship sinking a century ago. This vision materialized into the iconic film Titanic, which quickly ascended to unparalleled heights of popularity upon its release in 1997. In its time, Titanic soared to become the highest grossing film of all time, raking in a staggering worldwide box office of over 1.8 billion. Beyond financial success, the film earned the distinction of being one of the most viewed movies ever, However, the spectacle of creating such a cinematic masterpiece came at a considerable cost. The production of Titanic carried a whopping price tag of $200 million, a substantial sum even by 1990s standards. In today's currency, this would equate to around $360 million. What's even more astounding is the fact that the movie's production cost surpassed the original Titanic's construction expense. In 1912, the ship was built for a total cost of $7.5 million. Adjusted for inflation, this amounts to just $190 million, significantly less than James Cameron's ambitious budget. In a curious turn of events, Cameron's cinematic endeavor ended up being far more successful than the ill-fated ship that shared its name. The film not only eclipsed its production costs, but also left an indelible mark on cinematic history securing James Cameron's place among the filmmaking elite. Before we move on, here is today's subscriber's pick. Hey there, curious minds. Feast your eyes on this jaw-dropping image capturing the exact moment the Titanic split into two. 
Now we all know the iceberg played a role, but guess what? There's more to this chilling tale. Picture this, the Titanic, a grand beauty with a dark secret. The builders, in a race against time and budget constraints, made some risky choices. The steel used for the hull? Not the sturdiest. When that iceberg came knocking, the weak steel made things go from bad to worse. And hold on to your seats for this one. The walls inside, called bulkheads, were like short superheroes trying to stop a flood. Unfortunately, they couldn't. Plus, the upper floors lacked proper doors, letting water play hopscotch. Now, here's where it gets real. The double bottom hull, not as bottom covering as you'd think. Joints not flexing as they should. Titanic trouble. These hiccups turn the unsinkable into a chilling tale of the unexpected. So, dear viewers, what do you think? Was it just the iceberg? Or did the Titanic's construction play a starring role in this tragedy? Share your thoughts below and let's unravel this icy mystery together. Number 5. Finding Titanic Wreckage Despite being the largest ship ever constructed at the time of its sinking, the wreckage of the Titanic eluded discovery for an astonishing 73 years. The vastness of the ocean, coupled with numerous dedicated search missions, kept the ship's final resting place a mystery from the public. It wasn't until 1985 that the Titanic's location was accidentally revealed during a secret United States Navy investigation. The discovery emerged as part of a clandestine mission during the Cold War, focusing on the wreckage of two nuclear submarines. The oceanographer responsible for finding the iconic ocean liner disclosed that the Titanic's location was essentially stumbled upon during this top-secret Navy operation. However, the Navy remained bound by secrecy regarding the matter for several decades. On September 1, 1985, a joint American-French expedition, led by the renowned American oceanographer Dr. Robert Ballard, successfully located the Titanic over two miles below the ocean's surface. The breakthrough came through the use of an unmanned submersible named Argo. Originally, the expedition's primary objective was to investigate the potential presence of nuclear waste from two nearby submarines. However, the mission proved unexpectedly fruitful and led to the most famous underwater discovery in history. The accidental revelation of the Titanic's resting place not only shed new light on the circumstances surrounding its sinking, but also sparked renewed enthusiasm for ocean exploration. What began as a covert military mission transformed into a momentous event, marking a pivotal milestone in underwater discovery and opening up new avenues for exploring the mysteries of the deep sea. Number 4. The Unsinkable Safe, The Unearthed Valuables Within the opulence of the Titanic's submerged world, discoveries unfolded that resonated with the wealth and significance of its illustrious passengers. Among these evocative artifacts, a robust steel safe emerged as a poignant relic. Once entrusted with safeguarding the valuable possessions of affluent patrons, this grim yet captivating safe was hoisted up from the ocean depths, unveiling a haunting scene of lost luxury. The sturdily constructed safe, initially designed to secure money, jewelry, and essential documents for the elite transatlantic travelers, symbolized the safety and security promised by the supposedly unsinkable ship. However, this very object morphed into a sinister memento, bearing witness to failed assurances and an unforeseen catastrophe. Retrieving the safe proved to be a monumental task, given its substantial weight and the unforgiving conditions of the ocean floor. Yet when explorers triumphantly succeeded in their mission, a sense of anticipation permeated the surroundings as everyone eagerly awaited the revelation of its secrets, hoping for a glimpse into the abruptly halted lives of that tragic night. Upon unlocking the safe, a collection of artifacts surfaced in varying conditions, tarnished and contorted by the brutal pressure and corrosive salt water. Among the unearthed treasures were cash in different currencies, precious jewelry, stocks, and bonds. Personal documents, sealed letters, and photographs provided an intimate and deeply moving connection to the ship's former inhabitants. The stories encapsulated within these artifacts spoke of high hopes, ambitious dreams, and then profound despair. Every piece recovered from this supposedly unsinkable safe became a poignant voice from the past, 
crafting a vivid portrait of individuals once brimming with life and aspiration, oblivious to the horror awaiting them. Today, the safe stands not merely as a repository of the wealthy, but as a silent tribute to the lives lost, a chilling symbol of the mighty Titanic's tragic descent into the abyss. In its eerie silence, the unsinkable safe serves as a perpetual reminder of life's impermanence and the capricious nature of fate. Number 3. Unrecovered Bodies A significant number of bodies from the approximately 1,500 people who perished in the Titanic sinking remain unrecovered, with only 333 bodies successfully retrieved. The recovery effort, led by cable ships such as the McKay Bennett, the Minia, and the Mont Manny, encountered numerous challenges in locating and identifying the victims. The harsh conditions of the North Atlantic, freezing temperatures, rough seas, and the scattering of bodies over a vast area, made the task exceptionally difficult. Many bodies had spent days or even weeks in the water before discovery, resulting in considerable decomposition that further complicated identification. In some cases, personal effects and clothing were employed to establish the identities, while others were laid to rest at sea or in cemeteries in Halifax, Nova Scotia, with anonymous tags attached. The recovery ships also faced the grim responsibility of deciding which bodies to bring back and which to leave behind. Limited space on board and the advanced state of decomposition led crews to make challenging decisions about which remains to prioritize. The large number of unrecovered bodies serves as a tragic reminder of the scale of the disaster and is a source of heartache for the families of the victims. Many loved ones never had the opportunity to bid a proper farewell or pay their respects to those who perished. Over the years, various attempts, including deep-sea expeditions and the use of sophisticated sonar technology, have been made to locate the remains of the unrecovered victims. However, due to the passage of time and the harsh conditions at the ocean's depths, the chances of finding additional remains are slim. The fate of the unrecovered bodies adds a layer of sorrow and mystery to the Titanic disaster. The fact that so many victims remain lost to the ocean's depths serves as a haunting and unsettling reminder of the enormity of the tragedy and the countless lives forever changed by the sinking of the Titanic. Number 2. Fake News Surprisingly, the phenomenon of fake news has a historical precedent dating back at least a century. When news of the Titanic's sinking reached various media outlets, a concerted effort was made to downplay the severity of the tragedy and maintain a facade of calm. Numerous news agencies, including the Daily Mail, the Belfast Telegraph, and The World, reported that there were no casualties on board, presenting a narrative aimed at reassuring the public. However, this well-intentioned attempt to mitigate panic had unintended consequences. Families of passengers, hoping for the safety of their loved ones, were inadvertently misled, only to later learn of their friends' and families' tragic fate. A cruel twist of fate in itself. An egregious example of this misinformation can be found in the reporting of The Sun's Evening Sun in Baltimore on April 15th, which dedicated its entire first page to the Titanic disaster under the banner of Good News. The headline boldly declared, all Titanic passengers are safe, transferred in lifeboats at sea. Remarkably, similar narratives unfolded in other newspapers, such as the Evening Sun in New York, which proclaimed, all saved from Titanic after collision. Some publications even went so far as to assert that the ship hadn't sunk at all. The Halifax Morning Chronicle stated, held afloat only by her waterproof compartments, the great white star liner Titanic is slowly crawling toward this harbor. The Oswego Daily Times, using a United Press Association story, reported that the Titanic was not only afloat, but that her engines were working. This historical instance underscores the early existence of misinformation in the media, highlighting the delicate balance between responsible reporting and unintentional deception during times of crisis. The Titanic's sinking serves as a poignant reminder that the dissemination of accurate information is crucial, even in the face of the complexities surrounding tragic events. Number 1. The Titanic Sister Ship's Eerie Fate The RMS Britannic, 
launched in 1914 just two years after the Titanic, faced a similar tragic fate, serving as an unsettling chapter in the history of ill-fated ocean liners. Despite being designed as a more secure vessel with lessons learned from the Titanic, the Britannic was requisitioned as a hospital ship during World War I and struck a mine in the Aegean Sea in 1916, sinking in a mere 55 minutes. Though improvements were made, including additional lifeboats, factors like open portholes and watertight doors contributed to the accelerated sinking. While the Britannic's sinking was faster than the Titanic, the loss of life was significantly lower, with 1,036 survivors out of 1,066 people on board. The warmer Aegean Sea, more available lifeboats, and nearby ships aiding in the rescue effort contributed to the higher survival rate. The Britannic's fate underscores the vulnerability of even well-designed ships, providing an eerie parallel to the Titanic's tragedy. The wreck, lying approximately 400 feet deep in the Aegean Sea, is now a popular site for technical divers, showcasing the enduring fascination with the stories of these ocean liners. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.